Hey guys, welcome to Searching in Fearless Tarot. <clears throat> Today I'm trying a different angle, so don't judge me. <laughs> um, today's reading is going to be for Leo, Pisces, and Capricorn. And the song that was in my head as I was um, shuffling through was um, Only Happy When It Rains by Garbage. So I'm going to link that below if you guys are interested. Okay, so... Let's get in prayer. Father God, Holy Spirit, thank you so much for another day not promised. Thank you for all the love, wisdom, and guidance you share with us. We are nothing without it or you. Please help me to connect to the Leo, Pisces, Capricorn Collective. So, please only help me connect to those that have the highest good mind for all involved. So, um, the astrological cards I got for the energies you're in right now is third house, in front of second house so this makes me wonder if you guys are looking for new connections or um new people that can help you expand um some of you could be uh waiting on a business to take off with a business partner or um you could be getting a lot of ideas uh creative ideas with the people around you and that's helping you to express yourself more freely Let's keep going. What messages for Capricorn and Leo? Pisces. Okay, so I get the Six of Pentacles reversed, the Six of Wands upright, and the Five of Swords. A lot of you are really taking into consideration how you give your energy to other people. Um, who's worth your time, who's not worth your time, how you spend your time, how you like to spend your time. Um, a lot of this has to do with time. Some of you could be going through your Saturn return right now. Um, Six of Pentacles reversed gives me the idea that at one point in your life, you felt like you need to be needed in order to be loved, or um, you were always the helping, giving, nurturing, kind person that wanted to give to everybody. Um, I feel like you you always saw the best in people. You always saw what their potential was. You never really saw where they were at right then and how important it was to see that and how to treat it accordingly. Um, let's see, let's get some clarification. Six of Wands tells me that you that you want victory, that you're you're finally getting into a stage where you feel you're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about your future, what makes you comfortable. Um, maybe searching for the answers inside of yourself. Please clarify the five of swords reversed. Clarify the five of swords reversed. Okay. So a lot of you felt like, or a lot of you can see very clearly that the way that you gave to other people and not really letting yourself, letting your, I'm not saying this right. <laughs> Um, letting other people give to you. It's like you were, there's a lot of lone wolf energy in here as well. So it's like people, it was, there's almost this feeling of like, if people gave to you, you felt like you were weak. Um, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I'm feeling like past lives where you've been a hermit or where you've had to, um, some of you could be Virgo risings, um, where you've had to really think and ponder by yourself, or some of you could have Aries placements, um, like Aries moon or Venus or something of that sort, but something where you felt like you had to be all to everybody and there was no way that anybody could give to you. And you're seeing that by not letting others give to you, you're not giving them the same pleasure that you get when you give to others, if that makes any sense. And a lot of you, if you're, if you're finding yourself surrounded by people that are just taking and not giving back, um, you're understanding how much work and how much that drains you and how much time that takes out of you and why. Most importantly, I feel like you understand why this happened to you because I feel like there was maybe possibly with this tower moment, I feel like there was um, a moment where you had to leave people behind or you, um, you had to cut people off that you thought might be there forever. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that feeling in there. But anyways, you're, <clears throat> you're learning how to find victory answers within yourself, but you're also learning how to surrender 
and how to let other people give to you and who to trust and who not to trust. There's a lot more discernment than there was even, even three years ago. You're in also trusting your physical body as well with this wands. Okay. So a lot of you <clears throat> like this. Okay. So I see the King of Swords, the King of Wands, and the Eight of Pentacles. For some of you, this message is that you cut off the creative part of yourself a long time ago. You cut off the inner child. You said, oh, it's, it's childish. It's silly to do these things or it's silly for me to think this way. But in reality, what you were doing is you were cutting off your passion. It's funny because I, I, I can't remember where I heard this, but I heard this from somewhere that they were talking about um, when you when you don't tell others what you need in a, in a relationship or friendship or whatever, when you don't tell others what your needs are, physically what your needs are, you're not giving yourself any awareness. You're not giving, you're not giving yourself the self-awareness that you need in order to thrive the way that you want to. And I feel like that's what you're seeing now. And you're learning how to follow your passion. You're learning how to follow your heart. You could be, some of you could be studying new subjects or you could be studying like further into your career to um, advance yourself. Um, let me get some clarification on this King of Swords too. Heavy masculine energy here. King of Swords reversed. Please clarify the King of Swords reversed. I'm also hearing ringing in my right ear, which leads me to believe that, yes, okay. You had to cut people off. Okay, so the further message for this with the King of Swords reversed is also having to cut people off in order to create your own stability. Um, maybe a lot of you could have had friends or family members that took from you all the time or made stupid decisions and you were guilty by association is what I'm hearing. Um, you're, you're cutting those, those options off in your life because you're wanting to find your own home. And with this chariot, this, this doesn't really feel like a physical place. This could be a physical place. You could have bought a home in the last year. But to me, this also talks about finding stability within yourself. Because you can have a physical home all you want, but if you don't feel at home within yourself, it doesn't mean diddly squat, you know? So, I mean, it does mean diddly squat. You're not homeless and blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> you get my point. And with the Eight of, the, with the eight of Pentacles, you're learning... Ooh, oh, this is beautiful. You're learning how to be independent and to find the answers on your own as well. Um, some of you could have had codependent tendencies um, where you were always taking care of the other person and the other person wasn't giving back to you or um, eventually far enough into the relationship that person just always expected you to take care of them or always expected you to be there for them. Um, and so you, you happily complied because of how you were in the past. But I feel like now you're coming to the realization of, I don't need to do that. And I'm actually hindering the other person when I'm allowing them to just sit in that energy. I'm actually hindering them and not allowing them to be their best self. <sighs> Even if that's painful. This is beautiful, guys. I'm, I know, I mean, okay, it might not feel beautiful right now at the moment. <laughs> but it will be it will be because I think that your soul is calling you to do this I think that there's a reason why you're doing this I think that a lot of you felt this depression or this cloud this gray cloud over you for a long time like the majority of your life and at this point, you're learning how to lift yourself above it. Maybe you got to a point where you were like, maybe this is just how life is. Maybe this is how things are meant to be. Maybe it's just supposed to be burden after burden after burden. And, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to comply with whatever everybody else around me is saying. But you're learning that there are vast possibilities outside of that. And that you can row your own damn boat. You don't need anybody else to fucking row it for you. And you don't need to row anybody else's boat. I don't know why I'm saying rowing boats. <laughs> Knight of Swords, Seven of Swords reversed, and Three of Wands. Interesting. Okay. 
with this Knight of Swords reverse, there could be, um, <clears throat> there could, I don't know why, but with this card, I'm feeling like there's somebody that you want to talk to, but you feel blocked off from talking to them, or you feel like there's a, a wall between you two or a boundary between you two. I'm going to get clarification on the Seven of Swords. Yeah, okay. Um, it's making you very emotional, the fact that you can't talk to this individual. Um, uh, you could share things with this person, like you could share physical property, you could share children with this person, you could share a pet, um, or just friendship in general. Um, but Spirit's with you right now helping you and helping this relationship to evolve to where it needs to be whether that be in your life or out of your life. Um, but this Three of Wands feels very harmonious to me. It feels like there are certain issues that need to be healed between you two before it comes back together. I'm gonna get clarification on it though. There will be a balance between this though. Three of Wands, clarify the Three of Wands. lost opportunity and finding the balance within it. Yep. There will be balance. Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles reverse Two of Pentacles clarified the Three of Wands. I'm going to do the Knight of Swords too. Um, but for a lot of you, this relationship uh, was definite. There, the contract... It, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. I'm going to hang on. Because I know I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. All right. Yeah, feeling left out in the cold and wanting to go to... Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, with the Knight of Swords reversed, both, uh, this feels like both of you are feeling this, but you feel left out in the cold, and you personally are wanting to move to calmer waters. I hate that. I need a better descriptor for the Six of Swords, because when I say move to calmer waters, and people who don't know tarot, they're like, why the fuck do you say that? Um, but basically moving to calmer waters is like, this is a painful but necessary journey. You see her wrapped up in a blanket with her little child. This isn't a journey that they want to take. They're not fucking stoked. But when they're riding off into the horizon and you see the swords of truth, the six swords of truth, the six, it's funny too, Spirit's also bringing me to the number six. Um, I'm a life past six. So six is all about relationships and finding balance within those relationships, love, harmony, unconditional love, all those things. And I think that within this person or this particular relationship you had with this person, unconditional love was what you were meant to learn because you may be pissed at each other or there may be things that happened, but at the end of the day, there's unconditional love there, even if you two aren't still together. And there's a need to come into your, come into your heart center and understand that you can love someone, you can still love someone from a distance. You can still love someone with boundaries. You can appreciate the lessons that that person gave you. You can find forgiveness within your heart. Or the other person will find forgiveness in their heart, depending on where you guys are at. But I feel like this is, this is meant to evolve into a working partnership. And when I say partnership, I don't necessarily mean romantic relationship. I'm gonna keep going though. For some of you, it could be like evolving into a romantic relationship. For others of you, it could just be, um, it could just be this person came into your life to help you learn and you have to finish up a physical contract. And when I say physical, I mean like, I don't know, sell a house, uh, divide up time between kids or pets, things like that, things of that nature. <clears throat> um, a lot of you guys could be feeling left out in the dark from this particular person um, or you could have felt like you were I don't know I'm getting the hair font reversed the empress reversed and the page of swords please clarify hair font reversed tells me that there there's some kind of rebellion going on rebellion outside of the system 
because Hierophant reversed is like Aquarius energy to me. This is like someone who knows the system and knows the system so well, they know how to break it. The Emperor is reversed. What's the Empress reversed? Um, uh, some of you... Some of you with the hair font, uh, hair font reverse, this person could have stepped out of the partnership um, or rebelled against the partnership. With it representing the hair font, it does, it's not necessarily that this person was being deceiving. Some of them could have been, others of them. But either way, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the Ace of Pentacles, the lost opportunity was there. Spirit keeps pressing on to this message. I feel like they're going to keep doing it over and over again. Um, with the hair font reversed, yes, there was a lost opportunity, but there can still be balance found. And it's necessary to find balance. With the Page of Swords reversed, this is also telling me that you might not have enough information or the other person might not have enough information. Um... And they're just kind of assuming. But with the Knight of Wands reversed, this tells me that you may have made an abrupt exit or um, maybe you still have frustrations around this. There's still anger. There's still repressed anger going on in there. And I think that if, if there are things that are going on in your life that are reminding you of this person or you're hearing this person's name over and over again or whatever it may be, I feel like what spirit is trying to help you with is forgiveness. And I know it doesn't feel like that. And it's probably really fucking annoying if you're pissed at this person. <laughs> like, why do I keep having to hear their name? Because it feels, it feels like whenever you hear this person's name, it's like a knife being just serrated into your heart. Um, it's like a visceral feeling to me. Um, But the thing is, is that that knife is trying to give you, a, is, is trying to tell you something, is trying to give you information. For some of you, your body could be breaking down or you could be getting sick a lot or you're feeling sick a lot because you're spending so much time and frustration towards this one individual. Or you're, or you're maybe, maybe not even, you're spending so much time it doesn't even feel like that. It's it's more like there's just so much hatred and anger and frustration. And honestly, I feel like for some of you, it it's a you took it personally. Whatever happened, you took it personally. And you feel like it's a personal attack against who you are. Or it's it's an opinion and this is why this is coming full circle. This is why you're having to learn to not care about the opinions of others. Because at the end of the day, that's not what matters. And so this is what's being healed, is that opinion of others, that personal understanding. My love, just know that whatever actions someone else does, whatever whatever self-sabotage they're doing against you, <clears throat> whatever they're trying to throw at you energetically, most of the time that's a problem that isn't healed within themselves. It's not about who you are or what you do. And also Spirit saying, I, I keep hearing in my head, how many red flags did you see before, before this happened? This is a lesson to be discerning in your environment, to trust the red flags, to trust what your body is trying to tell you. But I feel like this is, this is trying to come full circle and it's about forgiveness because there are still things that need to be done within the relationship. Whether that be physical, spiritual, mental, whatever, there's still things, there's still a story there. It just may not be the story that you anticipated it to be. And this is calling you to be your higher self, to take the higher road. That doesn't mean you have to have communication with this person all the time. It doesn't even mean that you need to check out how they're doing. It just means that 
once you find that forgiveness in your heart, it opens up a world of love for you. When I say that, okay, let's put it this way. Um, <clears throat> when you go out to the bar and you're single, you have an open eye for, I'm not saying you're a hoe. I'm sure you're not a hoe or maybe you're a hoe proudly. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all I'm saying is if you, if you go to the bar and you're single, okay, you're looking at all the different possibilities, right? If you go to the bar and all you want to do is talk about the frustrations of this relationship or the frustrations that you're having on a daily basis because of this, this resentment you're holding within yourself, you're not open to see new possibilities. You're not open to finding new friends. You're not open to any of the other possibilities that could exist because your mind is painted with the perspective of a gray, cloudy day because of that resentment. And that's what I mean when I say healing because it's, it's important that when we feel something, we feel through it. We don't keep it. Okay, feelings are supposed to, that's going with the flow of life, letting your emotions ebb and flow through you and not treating them like they're the enemy because they're not. They're what we came here in this life to experience our emotions, to be who we are, to express ourselves fully and to learn all the lessons in between that. And whatever self-sabotage this person was doing, I bet if you opened your heart enough to just have a little bit of a conversation of closure and an understanding of why it didn't work out, that might change. You might be able to find the actual closure in this situation. I feel like I'm just gonna keep getting the same message. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna spot it here, but I will explain the three cards. So I got the Queen of Cups, the Cherry, uh, the Queen of Cups reversed, the Chariot reversed, and the Eight of Cups reversed. This is talking about not walking away and not making the decisions. For my females who are still watching this reading, um, this could be you struggling to walk away. I feel like the lesson in all of this, no matter what's going on, is to show your emotions, to stop hiding who the fuck you are, because it's imperative to your health, to your physical well-being, to your mental well-being, to everything. And I feel like this message, just like it's shown up three times in the reading, is going to keep popping up until you decide to take care of it. And the problem is, and what breaks my fucking heart, in these in these scenarios is that people that choose not to grow or not to express themselves or not to heal are really fucking themselves over in the end it breaks my heart because every day you walk into a new day with new possibilities with all these old beliefs and all these old toxic things that no longer serve you why do you want to walk around your day like that man you don't have to, you don't have to, but I do feel like there is a need to learn how to receive a learn, a, a need to learn to let the story finish because I feel like a lot of you could be writing on assumptions of what this other person did or what the circumstances are going to be, or it's always going to be this way. Some of you are, some of you are coming from divorced parents, um, that you're literally thinking the story is going to play out exactly as your parents played out. But it's imperative that you open up your heart and see the new possibilities. If this person is abusive and toxic and verbally just crazy, obviously don't do that. All right. Don't listen to me. Please take what resonates. Okay. I'm not telling you to forgive someone that is abusive or toxic. I'm, I'm saying forgive yourself and forgive what happened and move forward the best way that you know how. Boundaries, especially boundaries. Know that your heart will heal and, and just try new adventures, try new things. But I feel like that's why time was such a heavy, was such a heavy, um, heavy feeling in this reading, really. <clears throat> okay.
Ten's cards. Capricorn, Pisces, Leo. Capricorn, Pisces, Leo. Pisces, Leo. Okay, Capricorn. No place like home. I try to hold it so you don't see the glare. <laughs> okay. Capricorn. There are times when what is when what is familiar and known is not the best choice. Human beings are memory-driven creatures, and we all look for certainty for what we know, even if the qualities we seek in other people and in external conditions are expressed in unhealthy ways. Avoid being too eager to find home. Choose something unfamiliar and trust that th there you will find a new normal that supports your spirit. Remember, if you do what you did, you'll get what you got. Do the opposite of what feels right, even if it's uncomfortable, because what feels right is really what's familiar and you will attract and be drawn to the very things you don't want anymore. This time will not be different unless you do something different. Pisces, loyal heart, I love this. 35. <clears throat> Pisces, Evidence of loyalty will appear in your life. Others will prove they are faithful to you and you will in turn fully commit to them. There is a sure and abiding certainty in your heart. Know that spirit is always loyal to you. No matter the outer circumstances in your life, trust and have faith for you are eternally loved, always divinely protected and divinely directed. And Leo, serendipity in protection position. Clench your assholes, people. Clench your assholes. Okay. <laughs> serendipity okay leo perhaps you felt almost certain that serendipitous events were meant to lead to something better it was supposed to be the perfect business or that person you gave your heart to was supposed to be the one yet it fell apart consider this sometimes synchronicity and serendipity come together to lead you directly into difficulties in order to deliver an important lesson you need to learn before you hit the jackpot don't get caught up in the drama of disappointment there really is a silver lining in this cloud Spirit always knows what you need and is guiding you to where you are meant to go. Pay attention to the signs presented to you. I feel like you're rolling your eyes at me, Leo. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's true. And you know what? I got that same damn lesson last year, okay? Spirit led me into the fucking lion's den, man. <laughs> but it's all right. And it's going to be okay. As long as you be the change you want to see, then you'll be all right. And you're truthful to yourself, obviously. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for putting up with my crazy ass and all the likes, shares, subscribes. You're beautiful. I'll see you until next time. Bye.